to introduce this anime, we are reviewing Higurashi Season 1 and 2, since we've seen them both. It just makes more sense that way. He wants to give the basic plot line. In the summer of 83, this kid moves into this basically isolated mountain town. Just some rural, just some rural village. He basically moves to this village, and then he becomes friends with all these people. He later finds out during a festival, all these people are kind of weary and just kind of talking in corners and things like that. The day after, he finds out there was a murder and a disappearance. And then he tries questioning his friends that he made, and they keep trying to like not tell him what's going on. He finds out anyway from a police officer that for the past couple years, someone has always disappeared and been murdered. After all that shit happens, insanity ensues. Yeah, as he tries to find out more about what this curse is and why people are dying, it doesn't end well for him. Yeah, He tries to solve the mystery. And the, the way they've done the anime is every couple of episodes, it's a short arc of him finding, trying to find out what happens, some of the characters in the town not liking his investigating, and it ends up in someone dying. It's not always him, too. It focuses on other characters, too. Yeah. It'll focus like on his friends or right. on their friends or on like a complete family that's just kind of crazy. What kind of? <laughs> I think that's well, understating it a little, dude. Yeah, well, all right, they're insane. <laughs> Although it's kind of looping and you, you get kind of confused, because after maybe the first four episodes, the story started again. So this boy comes back to the town again, and he finds out again that there's a curse surrounding the festival, and then you're kind of like, what? But it's slightly different. You might find out from a different character's perspective what's going on. So as you watch the arcs, you do get to piece together you know, a bit from everyone's perspective of what's going on. It, it moves forward that way. It's, it's, a, it's unique. It's a unique way to tell the story, but there's a reason. There is a reason. Let's talk about the characters, which I can't remember all their names. I think the, the guy wearing the gay red vest. That's me. <laughs> you kept pointing out that gay red vest for the longest time. Dude, I'm sorry. You even made jokes about that vest, that that gay vest gave him superpowers or some shit like that. Dude, to be honest, it kind of did. <laughs> I don't understand what it is with Japanese fashion. You know, I'm American, so I have my own fashion for my own nation. But what is it with these, like, really weird, sexually ambiguous outfits, like the half vest for guys and that show their bellies and shit. I don't know what it is, but what weirds me out is what's with all the weird rainbow colored hair with all these people? Eh, like, what no happens is bored with blue hair. I'm sorry. All right, we're going on a fucking tangent, but supposedly every single hair color is a personality type for that character. You can look it up on the internet or whatever, but supposedly pink is supposed to be like really cute and innocent. Blue <sighs> is supposed to be shy. Green is supposed to be like fucking hey, really easy okay, going. You understand there. they're born with their hair color however it's made. They have a choice what to wear. Oh well, yeah, they the wearing I don't know what the fuck that's oh, it. So let's get back to the characters. Yeah. The, you know, the only character name I can remember That's a part of his character. Shut, Shut up. up. <laughs> Fucking the only character name I can remember is actually Shion and Keiichi. I can't remember the other. Uh, Mion? Shion. Mion. Okay, so yeah, basically Shion, Mion and Shion. Mion and Shion. And Shion. Yeah, they're both twins, aren't they? Yeah. 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 And the, the other girl with that hat, that little puffy hat, the red, the one with the red hair, and the cleat. Yeah, with yeah, with the three foot long meat cleat. Yeah, yeah. That girl as well. <laughs> Grim Reaper cop guy. Everybody, <laughs> every time he shows up, somebody dies. Well, in season one, you do not get to find out too much about them, but you do get an arc for each, if I remember correctly, or from their perspective. Um, everybody so... except for the really little girl, the purple-haired one. You mean, uh, wait, hold on, uh, Rika. Yeah, I don't think she got really that much of an arc in the first season last time I remembered. Fuck that, she got a season. There's actually yeah, got season two. <laughs> <laughs> so how do, you, how do you feel about the characters in this uh, well, in season one uh, they're pretty one dimensional but for a reason the whole season one is just really going into their character personalities yeah. it yeah. really it plays to their strength on each of their arcs and it kind of like develops their weaknesses and lets the viewer know like why, why this person is so not trusting or why this person is so fucking like, violent. Real violent. 
a lot of that stuff will carry over to the second season, just saying, because you nearly need to understand each of these characters so that you can understand the second season in general. Um, yeah, I mean, what do you call it? Uh, brunette, she has a fetish for really cute stuff. Xion, the one that's always carrying the toy pistol, she's kind of a, a time boy, the blonde-haired little girl. Sadako. Oh, Sadako, yeah. She She's mischievous, likes to play tricks. The purple-haired one is, like, really, I don't want to say naive, but she's, like, the most childlike. Yeah, she's yeah. basically the mirror. She's basically the opposite of uh, Rika when she gets really serious. Oh, yeah, the one you're talking about, Hanyu, is that it? Yeah. There's the dude, your typical dumbass. Well, he's the protagonist of, like, the yeah. very positive-thinking kind of guy who likes to be silly and play around with everybody. And if I remember correctly, I mean, I think the first season focused most on the Cleaver girl. Rena. Yeah. Yeah. If I remember correctly, because especially at the, at the end, there's a big um, thing with her in the school. Yeah, I think yeah, I think season one mostly focuses on Rena of all people, but uh, I wouldn't. S- yeah, I think yeah, it I think focuses on uh, Rena and the guy KG. KG. Yeah. Well, you know what? The thing is, when you talk about characters in this anime, you don't really need. You don't really feel the need to get into them. It, it, it comes in season two anyway, but you're just more interested or intrigued with what's going on and why is this happening. And apparently, you know, you get the misconception that this anime is just a kind of like a, a gore fest because there's so much violence in it, and it, there's no, there seems to be no reasoning behind it. As opposed to that, it's not so much as a go a gore fest because before the gore fest actually happens, it's kind of just everyday life for them. They're going to school, they're playing around, they go to festivals and have fun, and then all of a sudden it just takes a serious turn on all the stories. The tone was fucking eerie when when it was scary, man. I, I was scared. Oh yeah, it gets really creepy. Yeah, but um, speaking of that, you know, during the normal parts, sometimes it kind of really dragged. I actually was falling asleep. Because it went on too long a few times. Well, I, I'll admit, it, it, it did get a bit dull at times. There were sometimes whole episodes where nothing really happened and it was just kind of leading up to the event. I guess. But the thing I liked about the, um, the thrill or horror was it was kind of subtle. It wasn't just, you know, wham bam. For example, there was, a, I think, was it Rika? She made KT some rice cakes? Yeah, yeah, at the very beginning. Yeah, and when he went home to, to taste the rice cakes, there was a lovely surprise inside them. It's not doo-doo. <laughs> yeah, well, let's not give away the surprise, but... That kind of thing is psychological, do you know what I mean? It yeah, made yeah. a psychological effect on you, so... And it also made his character weakness even more exposed. Yeah, yeah. So what did you guys think of the animation? Um... For season one, it's passable, I guess. It's okay. Well, I think they're very similar. <laughs> I think season two is slightly better, but the first one just kind of, eh. I think it was above average, but I don't watch a whole lot of anime, so this is kind of my skew on animation is all over the place. But I think it was pretty good, except there were some times where it got really fucking weird looking. Like, there's one time where Mion's shaking a ladder, and she just looks... She doesn't look like yeah, a... I remember that bit. Her head's just wobbling like a fucking... Wobble, one of them wobbling toys. Yeah, she, she looks really <laughs> fucking weird. So I would say above average with rough patches. I ex- I like the animation a lot. I really did. It used it had a cutesy factor, which I didn't really like. But then, obviously, it would switch like a kind of a scare tactic. Demon eyes and... Be, and it sounds tacky when I'm saying it, but it works really well, to be honest. And let me tell you something... I watch a lot of horror and shit, and I'm not easily shaken. But I'll, it, it just comes out of the blue, and it's used really well. Not used too much. It's very subtle and sharp, kind of quick. I liked. It. I thought it was effective. I thought it was. I thought it was good too. I was really surprised at how well they adapted the cutesy style to fit all this gore and how like mean and just crazy these characters decided to. Or they decided to make these characters. I think I've read somewhere someone could call it a combination of Moe and horror. Uh, yeah, Moe and Guro, I think it was. Yeah. If you want to talk about the actual gore, you don't see it vividly as the violence. I think uh, that's part of the the horror aspect, though, is they use uh, the viewer's imagination rather than show you. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. To talk about something that is disappointing is the sound. You know, yeah. it's not memorable at all. 
And to make matters worse, the English dub is fucking atrocious. Oh, yeah. I never watched the English dubs. Good for you. I put, like I said, like I've said in the past, I, I watch English dubs to save time because, you know, reading subtitles just takes that maybe 20 seconds more and it accumulates or so. And anyway, I like to see what they do with it because sometimes English dub can be excellent, like on Berserk or Blue Gender. Well, <laughs> Blue Gender. Yeah, yeah, you... no. <laughs> Eugene! <laughs> Eugene! Hey! <laughs> That almost. All right, let's not go there. <laughs> but you know what? The intro, the inter, the first opening was good. I liked the music for the first opening. Yeah. Uh, second opening, not memorable. Yeah. I don't really remember either one, so I don't care for them. Am I the only one that keeps getting reminded of the, of uh, that first opening? Am I the only one that gets reminded of the Lion King whenever I hear it? A little bit. So let's go back, because to be honest, we've spoken mostly about the first season. Let's go to the second season now, which is based on what they call the answer arcs, where you find out what exactly is going on and why. To me, the second season brings it all together. I've read a lot of reviews where people said that this is non-whimsical violence. Obviously, they didn't get to the second season, because yeah. you find out yeah. there's a reason, actually, why... I'm not, obviously we're not going to spoil it it's not even that complicated but it is very interesting yeah, I can see how you can get a little confused in it if you're watching in the wrong spot yeah. it has a little bit of religion it has a little bit of science yeah. and it just has a lot of fucking crazy ass human nature yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> the you know one thing I got when I finished this was man people are evil man really yeah. fucking evil because the, the bad per, the bad people's motivation yeah, I don't even want to say what it is but really I just thought it was evil yeah, you can't say what it is without ruining it, but it's yeah. just... I it's thought it was kind of petty. Up. It is petty, but it's based on those petty ideals that they just do all this fucked up shit. You see the same old characters again, but they start to shine the light on one in particular. I'm not going to say who, because it's more of a spoiler. We already, said, we already said who it was. Yeah. We already said it was Rika. Yeah. Well, the focus is on Rika. On the she whole pretty much just steals the spotlight from Keiji. Yeah. I'm talking about the second season, though. Yeah. I'm talking about the second season. Rika. Isn't that the one with the big cleaver? Oh, it's the one with the purple hair. That's Rena. The purple hair is Rika. Ah, see, I've got confused. The the really young girl who's the same grade as Satoko, uh, she's Rika, the one with purple hair. The maiden, the the shrine maiden. Yeah. Isn't it blue? Oh, is it blue? I thought it was blue, thank you. It was blue, yeah. No, the purple haired ones are like weird ghost twin thing. Uh, Hanyu. That's it. I, I got the color of the hair wrong. I didn't get who it was wrong. Whatever. You got you were wrong. Let's just let's just all accept that. Anyway. So yeah, um <laughs> you see the same old characters, but you get to see a, a a better do you get to see a new dimension of them? Not so much, but you there's Rika. Do you get to see a really big new dimension of Rika? Yeah. You also get to see it from her perspective and more of what's going on in the previous arcs that happened and why it happened. The second season is brought it home, really, story-wise. It's, it's, to be honest, the second one focuses on story, simple as that, and it all comes together, and I would not recommend watching the first season without watching the second, really, to be honest with you. It would be a mistake. Yeah, like, can't do the it first season, it kind of has its own ending, so to say, but without that, yeah. se- without that second season, it's just not the same. Uh, uh, you know, I was a bit teared up at the first ending. It was a bit sad, you know? The second season really just complemented the first, and obviously it's a, yeah. it's a puzzle, and so it's nicely rounded up and everything. I didn't have a problem. Again, uh, sound just wasn't standing out. It's the same. What, what can I say? Nothing's really changed. The only thing that's changed is more story, a better conclusion, and talking about the conclusion, perfect in my. It was great, great ending. Oh yeah. Yeah, paced well. They still. The the loop is still in effect, by the way. At this point, the storyline still tells it in a loop, and it's kind of actually in this season because of the antagonist, the loop becomes more enjoyable because the story starts to progress towards a climax. Well, that's the thing too. Is like the first season, it's not linear. The second season, the entire series becomes linear. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah, the first season's kind of like everywhere, and you're not exactly sure what's happening after like for like the first two arcs and then you kind of get a feeling of what's going on when the second season happens you're more aware of the loop and time just kind of keeps going in a straight line even though it's 
go on. Well, yeah, the yeah. reason why the first scene is kind of, you know, confusing for the first few episodes, like, I don't know, 12, 13, whatever, you kind of get really confused because it doesn't go answer, like, it doesn't go question arc, then the answer arc for that arc. No, it goes all the question arcs and then all the answer arcs. So you're like, kind of confused for what the answer to which. Exactly, exactly. Season one, only question arc. Season two, only answer arc. So it's a unique way to tell the story and, uh, yeah, I really, overall, I really like this anime uh, in its entirety, but I will say, we're not going to review season three, but I did, what, well, I won't even call it season three, there's a third little spin-off OVA. You mean Ray? Yeah, which is really kind of, I think it's for the fans, maybe you just want to see the characters be happy and play their little games and da 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 yeah. yeah, there's really no storyline there. If you see season three for this or Rei, Higurashi, um, Kai K or whatever, yeah, just uh, I've, you're not going to get anything out of it except for if you just want to see the characters being happy because you've watched them being murdered and tortured and miserable for two seasons, then hey, watch season three, you'll like it. <laughs> I didn't. It's all Moe fan service anyway. Yeah. With that said, we all just have to give our final ratings. I'll give it first class. I'd pretty much recommend it to anybody who likes mystery thrillers, horror, you know, anime in general, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, I give it a solid B. Simply for the fact that when it drags, it drags. Oh, does it drag? Oh, yes. You're waiting for the story to progress, and they're over there playing tag. And something <laughs> happens, and, like, she'll stop. And she'll say something creepy. And that'll be the only creepy thing that happens for the whole episode. And then they'll and, go back to playing like cards or something. Yeah, they're over there playing cards. They're having games and doing all this other stuff. That was only in season one, you know? That's still the same for season two. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes they'll be playing games and then one thing will happen, like an interview with the cop. And they'll do that like maybe once or twice of the episode. The rest of the episode, it's just dialogue and kind of explanation of what's happening. I do like the explanation, but it kind of just drags the story when they don't have anything progressing. And that's my main gripe and why I gave it a solid B. I'd give it a low first class. I, I, I still think it's really good, but I, I don't give I, I still think it's really good, but there's a lot of flaws with it that are really need to be touched upon. Uh, yeah, I pretty much recommend it to anyone looking for horror movie in general. Especially, but uh, it's. I think, in my opinion, second season isn't as much horror as the first season. So definitely, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. It, it gets more into mystery in the second season. And uh, I'll be the third one to give it a first class for what it is. It's done well, and I think it's a bit original, especially in the anime um, horror scene. To be honest, I think a lot of horror they do in anime is flashy. I think it's just meat and potatoes. But there's un- underneath it, they don't have the storyline to support it. And I thought this had the storyline, you know, it had the right characters to, to deliver the story. It was done really well. The implementation of the story was done really well. Animation was average, but, you know, it didn't need to be anything. But sound was overall, I guess it might have been better, but ultimately. But, yeah, I would recommend this to anyone, especially people that like horror, like mystery. Yeah, but I would say you put season one and two together. Because season one, it kind of builds the interest. Season two seals the deal. Yeah, this is an anime that you can give to someone who doesn't watch anime and they'll probably enjoy it. Yeah, give oh, yeah. it Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is good. I mean, you hear a lot of hype about this one. You know, hype for good reason. You know, hype for good yeah. reason. So, you know, folks, check it out. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Anything else to say, folks? Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it? Yep. Why? <laughs> oh yeah stay off my lawn yeah folks that's it uh, thank you for listening and uh, good night everybody good night peace